Hello, hello. Welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hi, y'all. I'm Karista. And thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love Always Self. We hope you guys are having a wonderful day thus far. Absolutely. It is a uh, beautiful day outside and I've had a pretty awesome weekend. Uh, a little date night action. Uh, it was it was great. Anyway, it's all rainbow. That yep. was cool. Yep. It was huge. We had some flirtation of rain yesterday in central Texas. So that was exciting considering we're in a deep drought right now. And we've had high, high temperatures for a while, <laughs> several weeks. Yeah, we have. So uh, today's topic, uh, I feel like this is going to really just hit home for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it, ha it hits home for me quite a bit, but uh, today we kind of want to talk about what success means to each of us, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we've been on our own journey through this, uh, through determining what success means to us uh, and and what failures mean to us too. So we've definitely hit our road bumps <laughs> yeah. along the way, you know, not just related to the podcast, but, you know, just in life in general, right? Uh, there's life is filled with successes with failures, with, you know, challenges, with accomplishments. And so we wanted to chat today about maybe redefining what success means, because yeah. I know us growing up in the you know nineties ish, eighties, nineties, two thousands. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I would argue that we're continuing to grow up too, you know, <laughs> maybe, but maybe <laughs> we were taught that you know, success was following along the American dream. You finish school, you go to college, you get a degree, you get a great job, and then you stick with that job, you create a family, and eventually you retire. And that is a successful life or used to be what we would call a successful life. And I think now we have you know, begun to enter a time frame when we are really starting to step out of the boxes that have been created from, you know, past generations. So yeah. we're learning how to redefine what success means to each of us. And I think collectively speaking, we're all going to start feeling a much larger resistance towards those things that are no longer in alignment with us. Mm -hmm. And and with that is going to be redefining the whole feeling of whatever success is supposed to be in this picture perfect image of what that looks like. And, you know, I think a lot of people try to see success as this image of something external from themselves, you know, by like this big movie star is so successful or this, you know, lawyer that has everything they've ever wanted is so successful, you know, and and, you know, when we're just talking about it from like maybe even a work standpoint or whatever, but I, uh, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes in all of their lives. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe they're just following the footsteps of what they've been told is success as well. And it may not even be bringing them what true, you know, joy and happiness, you know, is inside for mm -hmm. them. Absolutely. So, so looking at it from, you know, uh, a standpoint of this picture perfect image that you are receiving, you, you don't see everything from that. And so really yeah. defining that success has to come from, you know, within, if you mm -hmm. want to even use the terminology of, you know, success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think debunking this myth about, you know, failing is important as well, because failure is not, yeah. it doesn't have to be this huge negative terrible thing. I mean, is it, does it create challenges? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Life is full of challenges. Challenges are what gives us opportunity to grow. If everything was easy, we would never grow and change. We would never be required to. So failure is not the opposite of success, but rather a stepping stone to success because what failures are is yes, you're not reaching your, you know, goal through that one step, but what you are gaining is insight, you know, information, a learning opportunity, an opportunity to shift gears, shift perspectives and make changes to elevate your experience and allow you to move forward in your growth. 
and discovering, yeah. And discovering likes and dislikes and, you know, all, all of the, you know, we can look at it as an adventure, whether you're in comfort or discomfort with it. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, want to touch on the failure aspect for just a second because, you know, story time, um, I had some Betty come to me and, and tell me that, you know, they were in this relationship and the, there was a need and a push to end that relationship. And they felt like they failed because Mm -hmm. they couldn't make it work. Um, and I really honed in on the, the need to make it work and the fact that they felt like they were failing and, you know, and I don't, I don't look at that in that way because I also believe that every individual, whether it's a long-term or short-term relationship comes into your aspects and in your life or your reality based on those things that you needed to learn in that exact point in time and reference, right? Um, so when those things are seemingly ending, you carry forth with that a ton of knowledge and a ton of, of feelings and emotions that you might not have had before without that experience. And so in that by itself, you are gaining some form of success. You know, I'm using the quotation fingers here, um, because now you understand exactly what it is that you didn't maybe like about that relationship and maybe all the things that you did like about that relationship. And you can carry that into, you know, whatever next existence you want to have with someone in their, in your co-creation, I guess, Mm -hmm. you know? And to add to that, it's not just the personal relationships, like love relationships. It's, you know, Uh, you can use that in your business relationships in your, with your employers, with friends, with, you know, coworkers, it, the list goes on. Uh, It's, it's again, an opportunity to learn what works well, what doesn't, what's in alignment with you, what feels right. And what's going to, you know, help you move forward in your growth. Yeah, absolutely. So we can take all of the previous lessons that we've learned from our quote unquote failures, you know, I mean, there, there's many times where we have decided, you know, and I'll, I'll speak for myself on this one where I've decided to do something, right. I was, you and I were just talking about this the other night, um, where I had said, Hey, you know, at one point I, you know, promoted bars and Mm -hmm. then I decided I didn't like it anymore. And I don't see me moving on from that experience as a failure. And then I switched over to, you know, uh, doing fashion shows, you know, and then I just kind of decided I didn't want to do that anymore either. I don't see that as a failure. Then I started doing wedding planning, you know, there's this need that, uh, and I don't, I don't, it's not a need. I want to say that there is this, uh, programming that we have that you find this one thing, you know, <laughs> And then Mm -hmm. that's the thing that you become good at. And you're only supposed to stick with that one thing. And Mm -hmm. if you don't make it, then you're a failure at that. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're not successful. And Mm -hmm. and I think we should just really like, you know, as we were talking about earlier, redefine what that is. Like, why aren't we just allowed to have fluidity in the creations that we're making in our day-to-day lives, you know, and just enjoy those aspects as they are from that time being, it's not a failure because you decide to move on from that. And Shira, that's that's a perfect example of looking at both sides of the coin. So you could have looked at changing your roles as a failure, right? You weren't doing well, it didn't feel right, so you failed at it. But rather than looking at it as a failure, what you did is that you looked at it as an opportunity to recreate Shira. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And does that not feel like more success? Like the the being able to be who Shira is and do what is in alignment with Shira. It does. It definitely feels like more success. It feels, it feels freeing to -hmm. just continue to choose to recreate whatever I, I want. And, and there's this, um, this need, this drive, this freedom aspect, right. And maybe defining what freedom feels like for you is also super important and yeah. and understanding what what you know if i if i take a piece of paper right now and i write down you know what are the, what does freedom feel like for me creation is one of those key things for myself um you know uh feeling the the need to be loved and and show love however i choose to 
mm-hmm. um, you know, having freedom in my expression of, of who I am and that all those types of things is, is part of my value system uh, of having that right and success. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> so I want to walk it back a step or two and talk about like defining what success means for you. So I know for me, when I was younger, I used to define success with like material items, with mm-hmm. financial stability, um, or having a certain number in the bank, having a husband, having a family, having, you know, a house, X, Y, and Z, having, 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 right? Rather than feeling. And now that we've matured a little bit, a little bit, you know, I think you and I have taken this to a new level of defining what success means to us in terms of how does it feel to be successful? Because what we're finding is as we've grown and as we've lived and as we've met those certain, um, levels of predefined success, we're finding that it doesn't feel successful, right? We're not, so what does it feel like to be successful? I know for me, like having a sense of peace and security, fluidity, freedom to move around. And like you said, create, laugh, play, be joyful. Yeah. And here I want to insert just this little bit about happiness, right? I will be happy when I'm successful. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) I say, don't wait. Right. Don't wait. Don't wait until this measure is met to allow yourself to be happy. Because we can be happy every step of the way without reaching a certain point first. It's a choice. It's a mindset. Not always an easy choice, but it is a choice. Yeah, (laughs) it is. And maybe having a moment with yourself to realize that it's, it's possible that you're defining happiness, success, freedom off of what you were told it should look like versus giving yourself an opportunity to just enjoy what it really is that you want and what it really is, how it would feel for you mm-hmm. individually and without individually, worrying individually. Yes. Right. Without because worrying about everybody else. Some of us strive under stress and pressure and other people don't, which is what, like, just as a simple one single example of our individual nature needing different things and defining it differently. Yeah. Uh, I would even like to state that I do think that the only true failure is not trying. Hmm. Yep. And we're not talking about the the little breaks that we suggest that you take for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. That's uh, that those are important, obviously, but but it's just the simple fact of, and there are some that are choosing to that path, right? And, and maybe that was a lesson that they needed to learn in this lifetime. And I totally get that. But I I am with you on the the not trying. Um, every time I've recreated my own self, which I'm doing at my own free will to do, uh, not caring about the judgment of others, may I add on top of that. Um, but when I do recreate this, uh, attachment towards image of me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm choosing to do so with the intent that I'm going to try at whatever it is that I'm, I'm in my creation process for. Mm -hmm. And, and it does take work. It's not always easy. Um, you know, and sometimes I do feel like giving up and that's okay. But if I feel called to it, if I feel aligned to it, if it brings me joy, then I'll, I'll tackle those moments. And, and again, with what you're saying, uh, Care Bears, it's, it's trying, right? Mm-hmm. I'd also like to point out that making mistakes are not failures either. Oh yeah. And just because it's uncomfortable doesn't mean it's wrong either. 
Oh, absolutely. I've made, you know, <laughs> I will say this. I've made plenty of mistakes. I, I have, I, uh, <laughs> I remember this one wedding. I have had lots of life lessons. <laughs> lots of life lessons. <laughs> lots of life lessons. Uh, I hope, I hope my friend that I did this for, um, is listening to this episode because I had this one wedding where I remember, uh, I, I'm, you know, the planner of it. I'm running around pretty fast. I'm trying to get things done, get from one space to the next. Uh, everyone's sitting at their tables. There's this band playing. Some people are up, you know, moving, dancing and stuff. And I'm trying to get from one place to another very quickly. And I tripped on a step and I like basically like face planted, like spread straight across the, <laughs> like in front of the band. Like Luckily flying the squirrel. band, oh, it was like total flying squirrel. And, um, and I remember holding on to that. Oh, wow. What did that look like to other people? Like, you know, mm -hmm. I felt, I remember holding on to that, you know, like I'm supposed to be this wedding planner that has it all together. That's perfect in every way, making this day perfect for somebody else. Um, and, uh, and I just remember, uh, being in the back with the couple while they were eating and, uh, they were like, Hey, are you okay? That looked like it hurt. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, it didn't hurt. It was just more embarrassing than anything. And they're like, Oh, nobody cares, Shira. We all love you here. And for some reason I needed this external commentary to give me peace internally. Right. And it was a moment that I sometimes reflect back on about dusting your shoulders off, getting up and keep moving. Um, and that it doesn't have to necessarily be something that I'm needing externally from myself to be okay. And so that that's, I've carried that one with me. That's, that was, God, that was like 15 years ago. <laughs> Our own judgment of ourselves mm -hmm. can be pretty harsh. Really can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're sitting there stuck in that mindset of people judging you, I would, I would place a bet that it's you judging yourself more than them judging you. And they're probably yeah. judging themselves just as much as you're judging you. And this actually made me think of another conversation that I had, uh, with someone earlier in the week about, you know, getting a lot of judgment on parenting. Mm. And I think that's a really key role where, you know, failure is only if you're not trying you know, and yeah. really like at the end of the day, if that child knows that you, that you love them, that they are loved and that they are safe with you, you're doing great. Yeah. You are doing a phenomenal job. And I quoted an old, old saying phrase, um, to that, to that person and they had never heard it before. So just want to put this out there and remind people be like rubber. I'm rubber, your glue, whatever you say <laughs> bounces off me and sticks to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that like karma? <laughs> it can be a lot of things. It can be a lot of things, but you know, don't be afraid to fail, right? Failure is a part of life. It is not the opposite of success. It is simply a stepping stone in the path of success. And we define success for ourselves. So I think, you know, take a few minutes, evaluate, you know, what are some old beliefs around how you previously or maybe currently viewed success? Is it material things? Is it external things that are defining success for you? And then I would encourage you to take a step further and ask yourself, but what is it? What will it feel like? If I'm imagining myself being in the successful place, how do I feel? And allow that feeling to guide you in defining your success. I love that. I'd like to also maybe end this with a, uh, a thought mm -hmm. on top of that thought, because I think you guys should really put these two different thoughts together. <laughs> um, if I had an opportunity to release the thought of judgment from others and the thought of judgment from myself, and I wanted to just create something new and then change my mind and create something new again, 
and do that over and over again. And again, with the thought of no longer having an attachment to the identity that you have created based off of the foundations of somebody else's, what would that feel like? And go deeper. <laughs> and go deeper. <laughs> hey guys, you are living and living strong. That is a success right there. Finding every little bit of joy, every little bit of magic in the day, that too, success. Taking care of yourself, taking care of those around you, loving yourself, loving others, that is a success. We're constantly winning. It's just whether or not you want to see it. So we encourage you, zoom out, flip that coin, get another perspective. Stop being so hard on yourself. Beautiful. <laughs> Okie dokie, y'all. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And don't forget to love first, love last, and love always. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>